Hey, hey, it's your girl, Carla Renata, a.k.a. the Curvy Film Critic, spoke with Miss Luna Velez and producer Christina Steinberg from Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and I found out something about Luna that most of you do not know, and you're about to find out. Take a listen. So I know you have a twin sister. I do. And I know that you and your twin sister were in Dreamgirls. We were. You want to hear the crazy thing about that? Yeah, so I do. People <laughs> always ask about whether or not we switch places as twins, and I used to be quieter. And my sister was very like, wow, like this, and had a mouth like a truck driver. So I left Dream Girl, she took over, and one day she wasn't feeling well when I went to visit her on, on the road. And I said, why don't you let me do the show? And she said, people are gonna know. And I was like, they won't, I'll act like you. So I got you know dressed, did the whole thing, because I knew the show, and just started doing it, and people were like, mm-hmm. oh, something's wrong. <laughs> You're not, you're not swearing, you're too happy. And I was like, it's totally me, it's totally me. And then we switched during intermission and finally they were like, you're your sister. But by then it was really her. That's, that's yeah. hilarious. Wow. I always wondered if, if twins do that and now I know that they do, so that's kind of flawless. <laughs> <laughs> um, for voiceovers, how did you get started into voiceovers and what do you really like about it? I actually just got a call about this and I always wanted to do, I had done a few voiceovers here and there, um, but I just love the idea of it just being your voice. When you're on camera all the time, the concerns are, are different and you use different things to tell the story, but to actually really use your voice to tell a story without the concerns of appearance or or what somebody might think or facial expression or that kind of misunderstanding. There's so much to tell and so many different ways to tell it. You know, it's like classic sometimes, especially with men and women, right? It's like, what do you mean by that? Or misunderstandings about intonation or... So I, I love the opportunity to be able to tell the story and make my voice the character. I actually grew up in Brooklyn. And my dad was a cop. By the way, so we also, knew all of that. Oh, we did. And we, first of all, we fell in love with Luna's voice. The minute we heard it, we were like, that's Miles' mom, like hands down. <laughs> and then after we had cast her, actually, we were like, oh my God, her dad was a police <laughs> officer. Yeah. yeah. I didn't realize that there was such a lack of that kind of representation. And as this whole journey progresses, it's becoming increasingly like amazing to me. Yeah, we felt it was really important to be authentic and cast somebody who was Puerto Rican, from the Brooklyn. Like, it was just, it was really important for us to be authentic. The whole movie, okay. we're trying to be authentic and really represent who this cast really is. I'm in love with every single component of this project. Every aspect of it feels It feels real, it feels the family, the characters, the voices. I feel like you can only do that by having the real thing. You know, there's no faking it. One of my favorite moments in the movie is with Luna and Shamik, and it's because I have a son and a daughter, and as a mom, like the getting ready scene, just the first intro, <laughs> and then they, in a minute, in a minute, yeah, in a minute, I mean, and then you grasping him at the door and saying in a minute, not letting him go after you're rushing him the whole way. I literally do that every morning with my son, and it's the exact same dynamic, and it's so warm and it's so real the way you two play that together. I just, just my literally, it's probably one of my favorite moments in the movie. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> It's one of my favorite too. And even the her walking by, you see all this chaos and the café con leche, you know, that she's drinking. And it made, me, it made me think of my mom so much because I am one of eight. And I keep wondering, how did she even manage, mm-hmm. you know, let alone with one 13-year-old boy? What was the decision to make Spider-Man someone of ethnicity? Well, Because I really, I really enjoyed that and I love that. And I love that you guys got the coloring right. I love that the hair was right. Like I love that Miles' hair texture was right on point. I really, really love the fact that you guys paid attention to those fine details. Thank you. I mean, honestly, it began with Chris and Phil who originally were offered to do a Spider-Man animated and they said, we're only doing it if it's Miles Morales. We believe in diversity. We are tired of this old Peter Parker story that we've seen many (laughs) times. And we will do it if we can have free reign to bring to life the Miles Morales comic, which has been really huge and really successful. Um, But I don't think that many people in the 
great world know who Miles is yet, and they're about to. But that was the only way we were ever going to do it. We said it has to be authentic, it has to be Miles, it has to be diverse. And that goes from Miles all the way down to Spider-Gwen, you know, because there's so many different Spider-Men in this multiverse. But we really wanted Gwen. We really wanted SPDR and to have a little girl from the future who is Asian. And it was very important for us. One of my favorite scenes in the movie is when they are telling Miles he can't go and that he has to stay behind. And this idea that they all are connected by the loss of somebody in their family that they loved was a really powerful moment. And I think it's really important that you're teaching children how to deal with loss and how we all have to accept that in our lives. But the idea that they're, they've come together as a family united over this one thing that they all have to experience to me was really special. And to really stand behind Miles because I was so worried. <coughs> I was worried about him. You know, they were like, you know, you're not gonna cut it, kid. But they, you know, there's that wonderful scene where they're all um, outside the window. Yes. Like, is is it gonna happen? Is he gonna is it gonna is he gonna be able to do the stuff on command? And he can. The way that they actually they just don't give up on him and ultimately mm-hmm. that he still is the hero. And Miles he- winds up being mentored into yeah. being the hero of his own story and our story and I love that I so do too. and that they let him find it in his own way I think mm-hmm. that was the other really important message you don't have to do it like us find your own strength find your own power and that they're all supporting him to uncover who he is yeah. as he grows into an older child and, yeah. and learns how to make decisions for himself I'd never seen anything that looks like this. Yeah. And there were there were times when I wanted to sort of touch the screen and say, wait, like how did this happen? It's just yeah. this mixture of styles. And I thought, this is really working. And I don't know how they're pulling this off, but the, the color, the depth, the, the just everything about I want I felt like I could walk into this world. Well then I'm gonna show it to you in 3D. <gasps> oh, you have to see. It's pretty spectacular. And it was spectacular talking to you two ladies. I can't wait to see it in 3D. I can't wait to see it a million times, and you shouldn't wait to see it either. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, produced by Sony Animated Pictures, is in theaters right now. Check it out. This is your girl, Carla Renata, a.k.a. The Curvy Film Critic. Love, peace, and hair grease. Until the next time.